حكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد uh, Today we are going to talk about briefly about the seerah, about the life and the trials and tribulations of the Prophet Abraham that is known amongst Muslims as Ibrahim Prophet Abraham or Ibrahim is the single prophet that is accepted by almost every single religion not only Muslims rather many other than Muslims they also respect him they also uh, accept him as uh, as as the person of high determination someone who was a role model in various aspects of his life and the Christians they highly respect Prophet Ibrahim the Jews they also respect even the Hindus they also respect the Prophet Ibrahim and in fact these three main religions Islam and the Christianity and Judaism they are known as Abrahamic religion because all three they come from the Prophet uh, Ibrahim the reason being that the, it is well known that the Christians they believe in many prophets but mainly in Jesus Christ although their belief with regards to Jesus Christ is different to the belief of the Muslims but they consider Jesus Christ as the main figure within their religion and as a Muslim we believe that Jesus he was the prophet of God and he came from the progeny of Ibrahim likewise Jews they consider as the main figure or the main uh, prophet of their religion is prophet Moses and he also comes from the progeny of prophet Ibrahim and we as a Muslim we believe Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to the final prophet final messenger of God and he was also from the progeny of Ibrahim the fact is that Prophet Ibrahim Allah gave him an honor that every single prophet every single messenger who came after Prophet Ibrahim they all came from the progeny of Ibrahim Prophet Ibrahim he had two sons Ishmael and second one is Haq, Ishaq so the final Prophet Muhammad he's from the progeny of Ishmael and there was no Prophet before him from the progeny of Ishmael as for rest of the Prophet they are from the progeny of Ishaq so they all goes back to Prophet Ibrahim then this is uh, the main reason that all main religions they respect Prophet Ibrahim for Muslims Prophet Ibrahim is the person is a prophet that should be taken as one of the best role model in various aspects of the life in fact when we study the Holy Book Quran we find that Allah instructed our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to follow the footsteps of the Prophet Ibrahim so he was instructed to follow Prophet Ibrahim to the level that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he loved his forefather Ibrahim peace be upon him so much to the level that Allah granted him a child a son and he named him Ibrahim 
and he used to mention and he used to remember and commemorate his uh, forefather Ibrahim, you know, very often. So why Prophet Ibrahim, why Prophet Ibrahim is the role model? If we look at the Quran, we come to know that Prophet Ibrahim has been mentioned in the Quran in many, many places. In fact, over 25 places in the Quran, Allah mentioned the various aspects of the life of the Prophet Ibrahim, right from the beginning of his age, right from the very young age, when he was even teenager. From that, uh, from that uh, age, all the way up to uh, the very old age. So Allah has mentioned, God has mentioned various aspects of the life of Prophet Ibrahim in order for us to take lessons. And uh, why we need to take as Prophet Ibrahim as a role model? Because he is one of the few prophets who went through very, very difficult times and he faced so many hardships and he, God put him through severe tests and trials. And he was successful in every single trial. He was successful in every single trial. If you were to list down his trials, we'll be shocked. And we cannot even imagine for ourselves to go through those trials. We cannot even imagine, let alone going through those trials. We cannot even imagine. For example, one of them was that he had to leave his city, his hometown, for the sake of God. His own nation, the people that he was highly respected by, they became his enemy when he started calling the people towards the religion, to worship one single God. His own people, his own nation, they became his enemy. And even before them, his own father, he became his enemy and he forced him to leave the house. And he left. So he was expelled from his own house and then his own nation, his own people, they became his enemy to the level that they wanted to burn him in the fire. And they literally threw him in the fire. But out of mercy of Allah, the God upon him, he saved him from the fire. Because a fire cannot burn without the permission of God. Anything, we Muslim believe that anything and everything takes place in this world with the permission of God. And nothing can harm you, nothing can benefit you without the permission of God. And that is why our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he advised us that you must believe and you should know for sure that if the whole creation, the whole mankind get together to harm you, they cannot harm you. If the God has not decreed, the harm for you and if the whole mankind gather together to benefit you with the slightest benefit they cannot benefit you if the God has not decreed if the God has not written it for you so everything happens in this world with the permission of God so the fire burns with the permission of God and this is the main element of the fire anyway but when the Prophet Ibrahim, he was thrown into the fire and what was uh, his, his, uh, you know, his mistake or his crime, he never committed any crime. Okay? The only reason that he was thrown into the fire was that he wanted to call the people to worship one single God and not to worship idols. Because idol worship is one of the biggest oppression 
and one is one of the biggest mistake that you can commit while living the life of this dunya. So the Prophet Ibrahim, he was thrown into the fire. Can we even imagine? We cannot even imagine. And we never, I'm sure, we never experienced this type of trial in our life. But he stayed firm. He stayed firm and steadfast. He never bothered. It is mentioned uh, in one of the statements of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that when Prophet Ibrahim, he was about to be thrown into the fire, he made dua to God. He said, he made supplication to God. He said, oh my God, you are alone in the heavens and I'm alone on this planet. Who remember you and who worship you. So be my helper. He put his trust in God. He relied on God. And this is exactly what happens. If you go through the trial and tribulations, if you go through difficulties, and if you are afflicted by calamities, and you stay firm, and you try your best, you try whatever you can, whatever, whatever is within your capacity, whatever, whatever is within your means, you do your best to safeguard, and, and, uh, to safeguard yourself, and to protect yourself from harms. But the end result, you must leave with God. You must leave with God. And whatever, whatever happens, it happens with the permission of God. So this is what Prophet Ibrahim did. So this was another trial. He was kicked from his house by his own father. In fact, his own father disowned him. And then his people, they wanted to burn him. And then later on, he had to leave and migrate from his region, from his, uh, from his town, from his city, and even from his, uh, you know, from homeland. And he had to travel on his own with his wife and with his infant child. And where did he go? He, go, he went to the place that is the most sacred place, according to the Muslim, on this planet, which is called Mecca. He went there. When he arrived there, there was nothing, nothing at all. Barren land, desert, okay, rocks, no vegetation, even no water. But this was the commandment of the God to him. He went there and he left his wife and his infant child there. And Allah, God has mentioned this aspect also in the Quran. This is another trial. He had no place whatsoever. He had no shelter. He had no, he had even no tent, nothing at all. Only by himself, his wife and his infant child. And this, is the, this was the place that was identified, this was the place that was instructed by Allah Himself. And He never questioned Allah. Oh Allah, why did you instruct me to leave my wife and my infant child in this land, in barren land where there's no vegetation, no water, my wife, my infant child, they are going to die here out of starvation on this. He never questioned. Rather, he left them there. When he was about to leave, his wife called him. He said, oh, Ibrahim, where are you going? He said, he kept quiet. And then she asked again, three times. And when she asked him third time, why are you leaving us here? Is this with the permission of God? He said, yes. When he said yes, his wife said, okay, then we put our trust in God as well. He's not going to forsake us. He's not going to destroy us. He is going to be our 
God, he is going to be our guardian, he is, he is going to be our protector here. So we put our trust and we rely on him. This is another test. And then later on, he came back after a while. When his child, uh, was, he, when his child was around the age of 10, he saw a dream. Prophet Ibrahim, he saw a dream that he is slaughtering his son with his own hands. And the ruling in all the religion is that the dream of the prophets are always true. So whatever the prophet sees in the dream, it is truth. So Prophet Ibrahim, he saw this dream and then he approached his child. He said, oh my dear son, this is what I saw last night in the dream that I was slaughtering you. And the child, Ishmael, he was the one from whose progeny is our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, oh my dear father, do whatever you have been instructed by God in your dream. Whatever you have seen in dream, do it. He said, really? Oh dear son, are you ready for this? He said, yes. Do it. And you will definitely find me amongst those who are firm and those who are patient. And literally, Prophet Ibrahim, he was about to slaughter his son. But God called upon him and he said, stop, O Ibrahim. We just wanted to test you how much you love me and how much sacrifice you can give for my sake. And he was successful again in this trial and many other trials. So when he went through all these trials, God gave him the certificate of success. He said in the Quran, This is a verse in the very first chapter of the Quran. Remember when your Lord tested his servant Ibrahim, and he was successful in every single trial, in every single test. And in result of this, God honored him. And he gave him lofty position, very high status. He said, Inni nasi imama. I'm going to appoint you as a leader for whole mankind. Look at the trials and, and tribulation that he went through. And eventually, he became the leader of all these religions. So this was actually the topic of the talk today. That in our lives, we do go through the hardships and difficulties and difficult times. And we are afflicted by, we, and, 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 and we are afflicted by calamities. But we always need to be optimistic. We need to have strong hope in the mercy of God. We have to put our trust in God. We have to rely on Him and continue with our life. That is why Allah has instructed us in the Quran that there is best example for you in the life of Ibrahim. And that is why Allah instructed our Nabi, our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to follow the footsteps of Ibrahim. And Allah instructed us, the believers, the Muslims, to follow the footsteps of Ibrahim. That is why we are instructed by our Prophet to mention and to remember Prophet Ibrahim every single day. In fact, our daily prayer, five daily prayers that we perform, on a regular basis, our prayer is not complete unless and until we make the mention of the Prophet Ibrahim. Obviously, we believe in Prophet Muhammad and we consider him to be our leader and our main prophet. But along with our own Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Ibrahim is the only prophet that we have to 
remember and we have to mention every single day. Not only once or twice, rather at least five times. When we perform our prayer, when we offer the prayer, and in the final sitting, we have to read the, this, this is called Salah, that is salutation upon, we send salutation upon our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And along with this, we also make the mention of Prophet Ibrahim. And this is not only in our prayer, rather for those Muslims who go to Mecca in order to perform their pilgrimage. While they are there, on every single step, while performing the rites of the pilgrimage or conducting the rituals of the pilgrimage, on every single step, they remember Prophet Ibrahim. As for those Muslims, those who do not go for pilgrimage, rather they stay within their homeland, they also commemorate the sacrifice of the Prophet Ibrahim. And this is the reason that the Muslims around the globe they slaughter and they sacrifice thousands, hundreds of thousands of animals in one single day. That is the day of Eid. That is going to be in probably just over two weeks time. In one single day, hundreds of thousands of animals are slaughtered in one single day solely purely for the sake of God, in order to commemorate the sacrifice that Prophet Ibrahim was about to do, which was the sacrifice of his own son. But Allah saved him. So the point is that if you stay firm and steadfast and you stay optimistic, you never lose hope, you never give up, you stay determined and you put your trust in God, then eventually you become successful. Not only successful, rather you raise your ranks in the sight of your God. And this is the whole lesson of today's uh, talk that we need to take Prophet Ibrahim as our role model. And I would advise you Whenever you are afflicted by any hardship, whenever you go through any difficult times, go back to the Holy Quran, pick a copy of the Quran, go through the translation of the, of the verse of the Quran, and particularly go through the biography and the life of the Prophet Ibrahim. It will give you strong hope and it will boost your faith and it will strengthen your religion as well that's all we ask allah the god to enable us to follow the footsteps of the prophet ibrahim and may he allow us to stay firm and steadfast on the right path throughout our life if you have any question you can ask i have a question yeah after Eid, we have to obviously um, slaughter sheep, do we have to, do we have to do that or do we do that in our own home, is that something that we must do or? The, yeah. Or, or, yeah, what is the situation or do, do we leave that with our father and, and it's his responsibility? So is it in okay. individual homes? Yeah. Or is it I understand the question. Yeah, basically whoever has the means to pay for the animal, he must do so. Regardless of the fact that who is the head of the household, whether it's father or son. For example, if the father he has his own job and the son he has his own job, but they live together. It doesn't mean that son doesn't have the responsibility to offer the sacrifice. 
and he cannot simply miss it. What about if I'm living alone as a single woman? Yeah, if you live on, if you are living on your own, then again, if you have the means, financial ability, to offer the sacrifice, you must do it. If you can't do it financially, then it's not sinful. Well, who do I give the money to? The money or, or, or the meat, or the meat probably. The meat. The meat, yeah. So meat you can give to anyone. I mean, you must have some friends. You must have some friends. You can keep a portion. You, kept, you can keep a portion of the meat for yourself. All of them are rich, so they obviously can afford. No, no, it's 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 it's, 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 it's you give it to the poor. No, it's, 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 no, this meat is not yeah, it's, it's not for the needy or poor or, or yeah. poor people. Some of them, isn't it? Yeah, rather this this is a kind of special gift. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, when you when you buy someone a gift, it doesn't mean that they are poor. Poor, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Gift is a gift. Yeah. So, and this special occasion, meat is the gift. Yeah. It should be given as a gift. So regardless of the regardless, yeah, regardless of the situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, you know, it will be as you know, you are acting upon the upon the Sunnah and the way of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And at the same time, the people that you give the meat to, you will re be reminding them. The, the the you know you in reminding them to commemorate again the sacrifice of the Prophet Ibrahim. So it is a gift. Okay, so I'll pay for that meat and put me a box at my house. And then, and then I give it to people. Do you, do I need, so you're asking, whether it's cheek or, uh, whether it's chicken or sheep, do I have to ask you as an imam to come to bless it? No, no, no. No, simply what happens in this country, obviously in, ma in most of the Muslim countries, Okay, they basically buy the sheep or the animal, they, they sacrifice, first and foremost, you need to bear in mind, the sacrifice can be of... Yeah, you get in the UK shop. Yeah, right. here in the UK. But it's, yeah, in the UK, basically, you simply book your sacrifice with the butcher, with the meat shop. Okay, you pay them just over 100 pounds, nowadays it's uh, around 130, 40 pounds. So you pay to the butcher, and you say to them that this is the money for my sacrifice. Okay? And then what happens on the day? Would you, yeah, are you asking me, she's asking what do you mean by sacrifice? Sacrifice meaning slaughtering the animal on that particular day. Yeah. So basically you give the money to the butcher and you ask him to arrange the slaughtering of the sheep on that day, on that particular day, okay? And that sheep is slaughtered, and then they bring the carcass into the butcher shop, and they cut the meat, they box it, and they hand over to you. And now, no, 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 no supplication, no special supplication, no, nothing. And then you can divide it into portions. Yeah, they would look at it, they would look at that very strange because it's obviously raw meat and an animal, wouldn't they? No, it's, it, obviously you have to you have to go through the right channel. There are some charities who arrange this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. yeah. <laughs> okay, so what would happen to a person who's not interested in um, paying for a sacrifice? He's not. Why is not interested? Yeah, why am I bothered? Just, just, what would happen to that person? Would they have karma? Would they have karma? Karma. Karma. Would they have karma? So the question, the question is, if a person decides they don't want to follow this, yeah, what they go, it? Uh, you're all right. Yeah. Come yeah. Back with them. What would happen to them? Uh, we don't know what happens, but this is classified as a sin. Yeah. A sin. It is a kind of, a, you know, neglecting the command of the God. Yeah, because my 
my father had told me. Yeah, because my father was saying, you know, I could give him money or, or whatever, you know, for him to do it. So, yeah, I just wanted to know the question. No, but see if... Your husband, if, you, if you're married, they can do it. So I just yeah, to if, she, 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 if she's on her own and she has a job and she has her own earning, then she should do it. She should arrange the sacrifice. Okay. Well, yeah, you could you explain to me about karma? What is that? What's that term mean? Karma, I can't understand. Say? Karma is they say what goes around comes around. It's a, it's a, a belief in the Kufa. Yeah. Okay. Okay, karma, yes. Yeah, it's like their, their version of color, but it's, uh, it's not. It's like the version of? Uh, Preordainment, something which is, which is written, but they say if like, you do something bad, it will come back, come back to you. Mm. James, it, it, it can be true in some extent. But it's part of the Hindu, karma is from the Hindu religion. And okay, so is it related, it's to do something with the spirits? Kind of like I know, know one of the beliefs of the Hindus is that, you know, when someone passes away, mm. the spirit, uh, the soul comes back in another form. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay. Not quite that, not quite it's that. It's more like... Love. It's like if you did something bad it's to some, like love someone. You do something, it's like what goes around comes, comes around. around. You do yeah. something, it will come back. Back to you. them, yeah. Okay. So it, it, might be, another way. it might be, for example, if I was to steal yeah. from, from, yeah. from your me. sometime in the future... Your money will be stolen. Would punish me to be stolen from or if I killed yeah. someone in his family something will happen to me yeah it, it can happen it yeah. can happen to some extent it is true it's not I, I, I don't understand the exact term of the karma but you know generally they you know the the what's called uh, the saying what go what goes what around. what goes around comes around it, it, it is turns, to some extent is true and this is what happened this is something that is mentioned in the book as well, the, the, the outcome of the evil is the evil. Okay? So if you do wrong to someone, you will be wronged as well. Yeah. That's, yeah? yeah. Because you would receive a consequence from yeah. Allah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So maybe you do something wrong in this life and yeah. no one knows. Yeah. It's a secret. No. Allah would know. Yeah. And eventually you'd have to face Yeah. Yeah. And on contrary, if you do something good to someone, yeah. then you will receive good as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing for the karma, we say to you, we should try to rid yourself because this is something from the Hindus and Buddhism belief. Okay. Um, no, I'm, uh, I don't understand the karma. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So they say, like, well, it's karma. This is the thing that goes around and it's written for you. This. Hmm. Obviously, we, we don't have this type of uh, belief, you know, as part of a belief or something. But it's, it's true. Okay. Yeah, it's from. Yeah, it might be some, you know, more deeper meaning in the in into the Hindu religion. Yeah, but for us, simply, yeah, this is what what uh, we learn from our text of the Qur'an and the statement of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that if you do good to someone, you will receive good. As, as, as uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Ar-Rahimuna yirhamuhum rahman Merciful people, they deserve the mercy of the most merciful. And then he said, have mercy on those who are on this land, the one who is in the heavens, meaning God, he will shower his mercy upon you. So if you show mercy, you receive mercy. That is why this is one of the one of the slogans in, in that we use in the charity. I'm uh, the trustee of one of the charities that is known as a Rahma. Rahma means mercy, and this is the slogan where, that we use: show mercy, receive mercy. If you show mercy to mankind, you receive the mercy from the God of the mankind, and the most merciful, and. Other way around, you know, if, 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 you, if you do bad to someone, you know, you, 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 know, you, will, face, you will face the consequences.
went to an Islamic conference and a man was saying that if the husband uh, abuses you or leaves you, that nothing would happen with regards to him. No, I, I don't think any Imam would have said this. I don't think any Imam would have said you must have you know, misunderstood, but this, <laughs> this is completely against the, no, against this. Yeah, but obviously, it's what the interpreter had yeah. I mean, no, no. Imam said. If he's cruel to the wife or whatever, then you know, it's fine, nothing would happen to him. No, either. this is completely wrong. Islam doesn't... No, no, it's, 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 it's oppression. Oppression is oppression. <laughs> so how can it be true? It's completely against the spirit of Islam. You see, I, I can tell you one, one simple statement of the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him. He said, you know, you cannot strike your wife and particularly it is not permissible for husband to strike the face. And uh, he also said, if something goes wrong and if something happens, then the husband cannot strike to the level that, you know, uh, you know, that beating leave any bruises. It is not permissible to that level. It's not permissible. In fact, he also said, you know, he said, how is it possible for a wise person to beat his wife and then he fulfill his desires with her as well? How? It doesn't make sense. And again, if you look at the, at the biography and the life of the Prophet, okay, you will see he, he himself, he said, I'm the best amongst you towards my family. And he said, the best among, amongst you is the one who is best towards his own family. The best husband is the one who is best towards his wife. If someone is not good to his wife, but he is very good amongst his friends and other people, in the sight of God, he is worst. Yeah. He is one of the evilest people. He is not good. So I, you must have misunderstood, or the interpreter must have interpreted wrong, but this is in the Islam doesn't allow this. No. Oh, it was clear because all of us were shocked when we ah, saw it. You should have questioned we him. That we asked him again, we said, repeat that again, repeat that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is completely wrong. I wish you were there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know where you were hiding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. We conclude with it.